Hey, and welcome back to Wind Biology. Today we're going to study how to read pedigrees, and we're going to use Punnett squares in tandem with them to figure out how autosomal traits are passed on to offspring. Autosomal traits are not sex-linked. That's something that we'll study in part three, and you're going to see that females are usually carriers for diseases, and then males are disproportionately affected, which was discussed in part one. So autosomal traits are more common traits, things like cleft chin, widow's peak, dimples, attached versus detached earlobes, and so forth. So let's jump right into it and let's check it out. Pedigrees can show you how certain traits are passed on from generation to generation. They show the presence or absence of a trait and you can figure out genotypes this way. So when you read a pedigree, there are a few things just to keep in mind. Here's a key or a legend. If you're a circle, you're a female. Square, you're a male. If you're shaded in or darkened, that means you're affected with the trait or you have the disease or disorder, whatever it might be. Now these are less common. Deceased, twins, adopted, or miscarriage. You're not going to see that in today's uh, video, so you don't really have to worry about it. It's just an FYI. And here's the marriage line. So these two are partners here. And then that line that I'm drawing there in red, that shows you the offspring that they had. So these people are siblings. You've got a brother and a sister and a mom and a dad in generation one and in generation two those would be their two kids. And if those kids went on to have partners of their own you would then draw another marriage line okay, and they would have children that would be drawn downwards okay, into generation three. So that's what that would look like when you read a pedigree. In this pedigree analysis, we're going to study something called attached versus detached earlobes. And there's a picture that's right above me. It's pretty self-explanatory what this trait looks like. And it tells you it's an autosomal recessive trait. So I'm just going to pick a letter. I'm going to say big A is going to be the dominant allele. So that means if you have the big A, you have detached earlobes. And if you have the little a, two copies of it, two copies of the recessive allele, that means you have attached earlobes. It's an autosomal recessive trait. Now, reading through the problem, it says if individuals 1 1 and 1 2 had a fourth child, what is the chance that the child would have attached earlobes? So now we're going to look at generation 1 here, and we're going to figure out what that fourth child, that potential fourth child, and their trait might be for earlobes. So there's the mom. The mom is definitely little a, little a, because she is affected or she has this trait and it tells you it's autosomal recessive. The father, on the other hand, there could be two scenarios that play out. He could either be heterozygous dominant or homozygous dominant. And we don't know for sure until we do some of the Punnett squares. So let's do this first scenario here where the father is heterozygous for attached earlobes. And then the mother is always little a, little a. And now we're going to fill in the Punnett square. Make sure you review my chapter 6 video if this is not making sense. It's really important. And now we're going to run the second scenario where the father is homozygous dominant for detached earlobes. Okay, and the mom is always little a, little a. So now we're going to fill in the Punnett square. And it turns out that all the offspring would be heterozygous. Okay, which means the trait wouldn't appear. But then according to the pedigree, you could see that individuals 2, 2, and 2, 4 are homozygous recessive which means you could rule out this scenario because that would be impossible right there, okay? Because th those types of offspring don't appear. So that means you have to go with this first scenario where the father is heterozygous, big A, little a. And upon looking at the Punnett square once again, you could see that there is only a 50% chance that this fourth child would have the attached earlobes. 
In the second pedigree, we're going to study something called dimples, which is an autosomal dominant trait. And there's a picture that's above me. It shows a woman with dimples. And we're going to go ahead and just assign some capital letters and lowercase letters. So I'm going to go ahead and say capital D is going to be the dominant allele. And lowercase d is going to be the recessive allele. So that means if you have a big D or a little d, that means you're going to have dimples. And now the question is asking, which of the following individuals is correctly matched with its genotype? And we're going to analyze each one of these. And choice A, they want you to look at individual 2-3 to see if this guy's genotype is little d, little d. And that would be impossible because this person has dimples. The box is shaded in. So that means this person either has to be homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant. So there is no possible way that this person can be little d, little d. It's impossible. So we're going to do this for each of the next three choices. So choice B, they want you to analyze person 1-1. One, one. Generation 1, person number 1. Is this person big D, little d? And the answer is no, because this man is unaffected. He does not have dimples, so therefore his genotype has to be little d, little d. No dimples. It's the recessive allele. Okay, moving on. So individual 3, 2. Is this person big D, little d? Heterozygous dominant. It's a possibility, okay, but we also have to look at um, this girl's parents. So her sibling, her brother, is actually unaffected. So for this to be possible, the mom has to be a carrier. And we're going to do this Punnett square. Okay, so these are the generation two parents. So at the top, that's going to be mom, that's individual 2, 2. And that's the father, individual 2, 1. And we're just going to quickly do the Punnett square crosses. And we'll just analyze real quickly that um, in order for her brother, individual 3, 1, to be unaffected, the mom has to be a carrier. If the mom were to be big D, big D, homozygous dominant, this would make it impossible for the brother to be unaffected. And you're going to see here, okay? So we're going to fill in the Punnett square, and you can see all of the offspring are expected to have dimples because they're going to be heterozygous dominant. They have a capital D. Okay, so because we look at individual 3, 1 here, we can infer that because he's unaffected, um, individual 3, 2 would have to be heterozygous dominant. She would have to be big D, little d. She has dimples, and she's heterozygous for it. And now they're asking individual 2-2. Two, two. We're just going to eliminate choice D. Okay, That person cannot be homozygous dominant. And we did that in the second Punnett square, you can see there. Because that would mean all of the children would have dimples. And because individual in generation 3, 1 is unaffected, that can't be the case. So we can eliminate choices A, B, and D leaving us with individual 3, 2 being heterozygous dominant. So that's the only correct answer there. In this third analysis, we're also going to look at dimples once again. And just a reminder, it's an autosomal dominant trait. So that means there are two possibilities here. If you have dimples, you're going to be either homozygous dominant, big D, big D, or heterozygous dominant, big D, little d. But if you have big D, that means you're going to have dimples for sure because it's a dominant trait. The other possibility, the other genotype that's out there is little d, little d. So that means you're homozygous recessive 
for um, non-dimples, not having dimples. So if individual 3-3 three, three married a woman who is heterozygous for dimples, what is the percent chance their children will have dimples? So we're going to have to analyze individual 3-3's parents, we're going to have to look at his siblings, and we're all going to make sense of this. So let's look at generation 2. Okay, and we're going to have to do a Punnett square for this one to infer what their genotypes are. So I know for sure that the father, individual 2-1, is going to be little d, little d. He does not have dimples. He's unaffected, that's why his box is still white. The mother, however, that circle that's shaded in, can be big D, big D, or big D, little d. She can be a heterozygous dominant for dimples. So let's analyze both of these scenarios here. So in the case where the mother is homozygous dominant, all of the children would have dimples. They would all be heterozygous dominant. So looking at individual 3-1 here, the sibling of the person in question, that person is unaffected. So I already have a good feeling that the mother is going to be heterozygous dominant, big D, little d. And we're going to quickly do the Punnett square crosses. Okay, so this leaves the possibility for children to be unaffected, to not have dimples, and that's the correct um, genotype for the mother, individual 2-2. Okay, so that means individual 3-3 three, three has to be heterozygous dominant. So that person has dimples. We're going to go ahead and write in big D, little d. And he's going to marry someone who is also heterozygous for dimples. We do the Punnett square crosses. And now it's asking, what is the percent chance their children will have dimples? And you can see there are three out of four possibilities here. So that means a 75% chance that the children will have dimples. So in summary, when you analyze a pedigree, you have to use Punnett squares in tandem to make uh, inferred guesses as to what genotypes the offspring, what the parents might be, and what the siblings might be. And that can allow you to formulate a clearer picture as to what genes are being passed down from generation to generation. I hope this made a lot of sense, and I will see you guys next time on Wind Biology. In part three, we're going to study X-linked traits. So these are traits that disproportionately affect males, things like hemophilia, and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, things of that nature. So it disproportionately affects males. Females tend to be carriers. And it's pretty much the same as the pedigree analysis that we did here for autosomal traits. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on Wind Biology.